Well, an online exhibition and archive has been launched today that tells the story of the making of the South African Constitution and the country's highest court. Titled, Our Struggle, Our Freedom, Our Constitution, the exhibition has been two years in the making. It encompasses a rich archive, creativity, and personal narratives in telling the story of what's become one of the most celebrated constitutions globally. Well, for more on this, we're joined by Constitution Hill Trust Historic researcher and content curator Luando Tasso and historian Lauren Segal. Good morning, good evening rather to both of you ladies. It's a pleasure to have your news at Prime tonight. Perhaps uh, Luando, let me begin with you. Let's talk about the process of putting together such an exhibition. South Africans of course know the Constitution. Well, we don't know it very well. We don't uh, interpret very well what is entailed within the Constitution, but we know of the existence of the Constitution. What is this exhibition? exhibition set to do? I think this exhibition just wants people to be aware of how rich the history is behind the Constitution. It's not just a document, it's a historical document and the history behind it is very long, it's astounding, it's inspiring, it is heartbreaking and I think that you know you see a bit of um, present day South Africa in that story, it explains a lot about where we are today. And I think that you can't understand the Constitution without knowing its history. Lauren, part of what you have done here is dig through tons and tons of archive, right? I think you said about 220,000 worth of paperwork that you had to go through. How, do you, how did you decide what to put in as part of the exhibition and what to leave out? Well, actually, what we've done for this exhibition is we've gone to what we call the founding documents of our nation. Um, these are stored and catalogued at the National Archive, and they tell the story of the very key moments in the constitution making process from CODESA to the multi party negotiation process through to the elections through to the constitutional assembly. And those have been the focus for the first collections that we're going to actually put out on the website, along with personal collections, which we've actually gathered in the process as well. We don't just want an institutional story. We also want to make sure that people's own narratives, that people's own histories, personal histories are seen through the archive, not just through their storytelling and interviews like this one. Being able to tell these stories, of course, makes the Constitution a lot more personal. And Luando, what are you hoping is going to be the role of that, especially in getting each and every South African to embrace the Constitution as something that speaks directly to them? It's critical. You know, this is not just a story of the well-known people in our history. It's the story of every South African, and I think it's very personal. And for us, you know, our criteria of success of this exhibition is if people start looking in their own homes for the archives that they have, and also sharing their own stories about where they were at different milestones in our history, because you can't possibly write our history as almost a, a memoir for South Africa without all of us contributing to a chapter to the story. So I think that those personal stories for us at the heart of the exhibition. How important does the Constitution become, Lauren, especially in 2020 South Africa, where there are so many different things that seem to be pulling us apart as, as a nation and, and so many things that seem to be amplifying the difference and positioning it as wrong rather than as, as an opportunity for, for unity? So, so that's such a great question, thank you, because I think that the Constitution is more important now than ever before, mm -hmm. and not just the Constitution as a legal document, but the story of its making, because what the Constitution making process gives us is a template for confronting seemingly intractable problems, sworn enemies sitting across the table from each other, the IFP nearly not participating in our national election, a whole series of, of violent incidents that could have torn this country asunder. And what we see and learn in the process of the story of our constitution is how people from such different points of view, such different places in the world came together and united this country. We, we saw a process of a country of despair being turned into a country of hope. 
And I think now, more than ever before, we need those lessons of courage. We need to understand how when we are faced with seemingly insurmountable problems, this country is very practiced in an optimistic, unified way of overcoming our obstacles. And of course, you know, many people by now, when we look at the decades after democracy that we've had, are waiting for the manifestation of the fruit of democracy to see what has been promised in the Bill of Rights. And the fact that they haven't yet reached that. The fact that they don't have those rights fully available means that their outlook on the Constitution is much more critical than, let's say, those that would, would have been part of, of, of the process of making the Constitution. How do we get a sense of hope around the Constitution, that, that it's not a, a useless document that uh, you know, some young people may say was put together by people who, who sold out the revolution? Uh, again, a very good question. And I think that, you know, to sum up the Constitution as useless or as a, or as a sellout document is the myth that we want to bust with this website, but also acknowledging that it definitely has its limitations. And I think those limitations could be due to political powers, because at the end of the day, the Constitution is a document. It only comes alive if we, the people, actually make it come alive and we demand for the government to actually meet out its obligations in terms of that document. So I, I am completely, as a constitutional lawyer, I do understand how limited the constitution can be, but at the same time, I've seen it change people's lives. And I think that um, it still holds a lot of possibility in terms of what we can do, but people need to know about it first and what their entitlements are as set out in the, in the Constitution itself. All right, well, tonight is a big night, of course. Maybe, Lauren, you want to tell us about uh, what we can expect going into the evening. You're launching uh, this, this entire project. Tell us more. Okay. Um, I, I think that what is happening at... 6.30 is we actually launching the project to our collaborators and our contributors and creators. And then at 8 o'clock, the website is going live. And we are delighted that we're going to be able to share it at last. It's like a baby being born. It's been a very long gestation. And tonight is the night that we are giving South Africans and the world this history. And we're giving it to you in the spirit of we the people, as we've been saying here, in the spirit of asking you to add to our history, to understand your contribution, and to understand your power in changing the society. Because blaming a constitution as a sellout document is, is not how we're going to transform. It's about understanding its power, as Luanda said, and taking action in small ways in our communities, not only grand gestures, not only grand political gestures change our lives. And so that, that's the message we hope to inspire when, when we go live tonight. All right, and very quickly, the website, website details. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 